completely understand that you have a giant thing, giant thing. Giant. I think that one was more physical to the point where you, you just had to see it. Yeah, I'm a badass. I know. I know. Older women, <laughs> older women can be cute. I need to go. <laughs> I'm done. It's just fuck. It's not a cuss word. All right, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. Today's going to be a little bit different, where we're not actually going to be talking about any of the normal stuff that we normally do, like just anime and manga we've been watching. We're actually going to be talking about uh, Megacon, because we all went to that recently, and we actually all got to meet up together and everything. So, yeah, Yay. here with me, yeah, <laughs> here with me today, we've got uh, Dan, obviously. What up, guys? Special episode, hey! <laughs> Someone's uh, excited. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> we've got uh, Roberto. Hey. And of course, Clicker. Hey, you get to see our fun adventures at MegaCon. Yeah, so, um, uh, I guess today the intro is a little bit different because, I mean, you probably know what the podcast is anyway at this point, and, um, we don't really have any, any agenda except just to talk about MegaCon stuff. So, yeah, um, how'd you guys enjoy it? Like, what'd you, what'd you guys think of it this year and everything? Because I know there's, uh, it was in a different, a little bit different place this year and, set up differently and everything like what you guys think well i was, it was uh, fun it was fun but i wasn't too terribly impressed being my first time there oh wait was it all of your first time there yeah yes it was, it was both mine. me dan and roberto's first oh. time being there i don't and think that is both or is it because it's three no. people and not two oh, okay just making sure well i i knew it was your first time dan i was yeah. more talking about both as in uh, Clicker and Roberto. Oh no, that's fine. Yeah. I was actually correcting Clicker and not you. That's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it was all of our first time, and I kind of feel like Roberto. I wasn't too terribly impressed with it. Um, the thing that kind of catched my eye was the dealer's room, and that to me was like it wasn't the most interesting thing I went to during MegaCon, but it was the thing that drew everyone's attention. And I, me and Roberto have gone to AFO for the past three years now, Roberto, coming That's on right. four. Mm-hmm. And every year we go to AFO, the panels we go to are interesting, they're exciting, you're doing fun games, you're doing all this stuff, and it's cool. And MegaCon didn't have the same feel to it. And I'm not sure exactly why, but there's not, granted, there were some very cool panels at MegaCon. One of them was a comedy, a geek comedy thing. I Only I went to, sadly. No one here went to it, but it was hilarious. Dude, I was fucking right. tired that day. I just had to I was go hungry. to sleep. Yeah, uh, we're doing something else. Before you get too much into the comedy thing, though, I just want to, like, like uh, keep the, the topic on the dealer's room a little bit, if we can. Just because I wanted to mention, like, to those who don't know, the dealer's room is exactly where they're, like, selling all the anime stuff, and as as much as there was a bunch of stuff in there that was cool to buy and everything, and everything that I looked pretty much was like, oh man, I want that, but I don't have money for that. I just have to like make choices and stuff. Unfortunately, we have to make choices in life, as the anime we watched a few episodes ago uh, makes it seem. But the thing about like a d- dealer's room and an anime convention like this is that, well, if you only go for the dealer's room, you're essentially paying like... 70 or 80 bucks to buy other things. So I usually try to look for value into things that I can get in there, quote unquote, for free, you know? So like as much as the dealer's room was cool, uh, when I went there, I was mostly looking for the other things that I could do besides just staying there buying stuff because I wanted to get my money's worth in the sense of like, I bought the ticket, I want to get things in here for the, that ticket price. It's just something I wanted to mention kind of as a devil's advocate at Devil's Advocate, counterpoint to, to collect a little bit. Yeah, you know, a lot of people end up actually just going to MegaCon for the dealer's room. Like, that's, they'll, they'll just pick, like, a day or maybe two and just go to the dealer's room and buy things because it's, it's just a lot easier and more accessible to buy a lot of things there than right. uh, I most know of that. the time. And that's part of the reason why I want to bring this up because if you only do that, then I think you're essentially paying 80 bucks to get to a store. Which well, is it's not weird. 80 bucks if you only do a day. It's, like, 20 or 30. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, that's a so good point. It's significantly less at that point. It's 
it's it's still paying money to walk into a store. Granted, like there there is some point to Dan's comment, which is there's stuff there that you can't find easily anywhere else, and that's cool. Oh, yeah, like that's that's, right. that's the aggro to the dealer's room. That's what draws everyone there, and like there it, it's. One thing that I really loved about the dealer's room was the artist alley, and every dealer's room always has this. It's literally like you have two rows. This, they're like So the dealer's room was a giant room with all of these pretty much rows of just side shops that just have all this stuff. Two of the rows are dedicated to people just representing their art. Right. And it's really cool walking down this alley and seeing what these people can create and what these guys did. Um, one of the things I bought because I loved it and because I'm a sucker for One Piece was a really cool picture of One Piece that involved One Piece and what their respective Pokemon would be of the One Piece characters. So, Roberto, I'm probably going to need you to help me out here. Um, what's the <laughs> As fire- usual. <laughs> as, as usual. You got it. Um, Roberto, the fire monkey that represents Luffy, what is it? What evolution stage is it? The final one. That's, uh, Primeape. No, so, Infernape, sorry. There yeah, Infernape. So, Luffy repinated Infernape, and, like, that, like, it was so cool because every single one of them had their own Pokemon that represented them. And it was, like, Usopp was Wobbuffet, which is hilarious because it somehow matches... Um, yeah, Nami was Meowth because she loves money. It like they, it was a very well done representation of like this awesome picture, and it's cool that someone came up with that. Right, so, I did see a lot of really nice uh, posters made by some independent artists and stuff that one dude was selling. That Roberto, I think Roberto got one from there as well. I, I don't remember if it was the same place, but yeah, I, I went there and I just like kept grabbing everything that interested me. And then when I saw I had ten posters in my hand, they were <laughs> ten bucks each, which a hundred bucks on poster couldn't really do it. So oh, I kept I like spent cutting. eighty for four, man. Yeah, <laughs> so, I like, also I, spent eighty for four. I kept cutting them down until I got to four, being two as gifts and two for myself. So I got Asuna and Mikasa for myself. So Asuna from Sword Art Online and Mikasa from uh, Attack on Titan, two very popular recent anime. So everybody must well, know that at this yeah. point. But they were just really nice art, in my opinion. Yeah, that that's why I stopped at this one guy. I immediately just saw this fucking beautiful uh, Majora's Mask uh, painting or art print. There it is. This beautiful Majora's Mask print that was pretty much like a movie trailer with the way it looked and everything. Right. Or a movie poster. There we go. And I was like, I, I need to buy this. And then <laughs> I just looked at his, his other stuff and he had another awesome Majora's Mask one that had uh, Majora's Mask on top of uh, Link. Like a Link's face and everything. So he was essentially wearing it and it was very dark and gritty looking. And then I saw he also had two like amazingly well done uh, posters that were one of which was Link and one of which was Zelda, which were just close ups of like. Um, like shoulders up, essentially, like pretty close up and everything. Right. And they were just absolutely like beautiful and everything. I was like, I I need to buy these. So, right, yeah. the That's quality of some of the stuff is just so nice that that you feel like you really want and need yeah. to buy it. <laughs> that and I got a I also got a fancy little figurine of uh, Kuroneko from Maremo because nice. It's one of the more you... rare ones because her not wearing the huge black dress and everything is just like. The little, little black skirt and like the the white top, so nice made me happy. And then CJ taunted me with posters, and then I finally oh, yeah. caved and got the posters. Yeah, the the four that I got, I just kept screwing with Clicker the rest of the day because he he wanted to get some of the ones <laughs> as well from that guy. I was just like, just just look at him, Clicker. Just look how beautiful they are. Look at look at the fancy little paper that he used to give it the little metal flakes and everything. Just just look at it, Clicker. <laughs> yeah. Uh... That art was really good, though, and I also got the same art. Is not not the same because I also got a Princess Mononoke um, uh, art piece, which also was really cool. Um, speaking of Princess Mononoke, there was an awesome girl that dressed exactly like her, and I got a picture with her. She was she was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so the dealer's room definitely has really cool things about it, and it's cool to walk around it, but it's also the most 
populated place in the entire con. Yes, that's right. So sometimes it feels yeah. kind of uncomfortable when you're surrounded by like 50 other people almost within like shoulder space width of each other. So that like there's good things and bad things to it. But overall, yeah. the dealer's room was a cool area because you got to it, it, it was definitely a giant money sink. If you went in there, you were going to spend money. But, yeah, I spent a couple hundred bucks in there. Yeah, yeah me too. But, I uh, definitely did, too. Not much, not many hundreds, but a few hundreds, yes. I, I spent probably two to three hundred. But yeah. it's, it like, everything I got there, I, I liked and enjoyed. So, for example, I have this awesome one-piece coffee mug now that I really like, and I always drink coffee from it in the morning because <laughs> it's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, now that I think about it, I kind of regret not getting a mug, because I do use those quite often. So I was happy because I finally found a decent condition uh, Game Boy Advance SP, which ended up not really mattering too much, because I, cause I, it's the, the brighter screen version, the um, AGS 101, but I ended up actually, they these guys can see since it's I have a camera on, they can see like the new shell that I put on it, which is purple. Oh, nice. Okay. So, it looks pretty much brand new now anyway, so the condition didn't really matter too much. So, hmm. like, it even came with a little screen and lights, so the screen's, like, perfect and oh, scratch-free wow. now. Yeah, that's, that's cool. nice. Yeah. I wouldn't normally expect someone to, to be... Like, I didn't know they sold, like, old consoles and stuff in there. I don't think... Well, I, I did see, like, a GameCube and an N64, but I didn't see a lot of Game Boys, so that's cool. Oh well, yeah, I, I went I went looking for these because I've right. I've wanted one for a while. I wanted to get one last year, but I didn't have any money for it really. So I ended up going there. It's like, all right, I've got like fifty bucks. That should be plenty to get one. So I ended up finding the best version for like fifty bucks. So I was pretty happy. Right. Yeah, I didn't really go there with anything in mind. I was just looking for like things that impress me off off shows that I like and stuff, mm -hmm. or games that I like. And then I ended up like getting the Durarada bag that, that Roberto showed me before, which ended up being pretty good and, and very affordable. And then those posters just, just blew my mind with like how good I thought they looked. And also the fact that they were original art that you could clearly see wasn't the same art style as the shows, but still very well represented characters and everything. And then I got this Zelda thing as well and other things that I can't remember right now. But I got a Samus Figma, which looks pretty good. It was my first Figma figure, but I might be getting more now because I really liked it. It was oh, also yeah. like very posable and stuff like the ones you showed me from Bakemono Gatari. Yeah, I've, I've still got uh, like six or, six or probably about five or so to get of that. Right. But uh, luckily, sometime towards in the next couple weeks, because they finally actually made a Shinobu one. And oh. that's finally releasing in the next couple weeks and I already have it pre-ordered. So I'm going to have that shipped to me soon. I am yes. so happy and excited for that. Because she is fucking adorable in it. And she comes with the, um, the, I forgot what the name is. It's the big ass sword that she has. It's like oh, twice as tall as her. Something killer. It's like the demon killer or something right, like the that. One, the one she swallows. Yeah. And it's twice right. as t long as her. And the, the Figma, like, the, the sword that comes with it is just, like, to scale. So she, ha if you, like, pose her with her holding it, like, sitting on her back, it's still twice as long as her and looks cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really nice. So, because, like, all the hands are interchangeable between all the Figmas, I might end up posing uh, Aradagi with that. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of cool things that I got, uh, but I had I had certain goals I needed. Like, I needed to get a messenger bag, and that was my one and only goal in that entire con, and I wanted a one-piece bag. Well, yeah, like I, I said, searched... like, this is the only thing I really searched for was the, uh, the SP, like... Other than that, it was like, yeah, hey, whatever else I find. This one was like, I yeah. need this. <laughs> yeah, since this was my first one, I kind of just wanted to like see what he had and stuff. And probably for the next one that I that I go to, I'll have some different expectations and, and already like plan myself better ahead of time and stuff. Probably get out, get in there early as well because I arrived like from noon to one p.m. most of the days. Or I think honestly, the first day I arrived at, like three. And then I won, and then I think the last day I was there at ten thirty or something. But still, like I would probably arrive early on the first day to to go straight and buy the stuff I want next time. Yeah, Friday was a really good day to get stuff because Friday people aren't there yet because it's a Friday, so people still have work and stuff to do. So it's not as popular yeah. as days like Saturday or Sunday. So Friday was actually a really good day if you wanted like figurines and stuff. They had tons of them. Like they still had 
tons and tons of stuff. I should have I should have jumped on some of the figurines I saw, but I ended up getting a Shanks figurine from One Piece that looks awesome, and I love it. I think the first booth that had a lot of figurines that we stopped at, both me and Roberto immediately bought something. Yeah, yeah Roberto just <laughs> straight up drops oh, $170 yeah, like, yeah. just right off the bat. He's fucking gone. Oh my God. Just fucking I had baller. to have that figure. So that, that's kind of being rich, Roberto. <laughs> See, that, that's kind of how I felt with the... Because the, I got the Kuroneko figure in there and everything. But mine was like 20 bucks. It's like, yeah, that yeah. one looks awesome. Sure, I might. Roberto's just like, fuck it, 170 bucks. Let's do this shit. I, I need <laughs> it. Granted, granted, it is Roberto's favorite character of all time. Pretty that's much. Was, so there's so. a Scarlet from Fairy Tale, so had to get he, that. He would love to be with Arizona Scarlet. If she was a had, real person. I had to get that. Um, well, like, uh, since you mentioned that, something funny that my sister said at one point was like, well, so they think Kobe's too expensive because it's like 18 bucks for a meal or something like that. And then he'd, he'd like, he, you'd drop 170 something at a figure. <laughs> I just thought like the irony was funny because like we talked about those things at the right. same day. <laughs> well, that was money specifically I had set aside. That I've right, been saving, no, that's up, fine. saving up for a few months for that specifically. Besides, it's not something you're going to shit on the next day. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely sitting on my desk for a long time. All right. And she understands it well. She she just mentioned it kind of like a, a joke, it, and I thought it was funny. I totally get it. I totally get it. Hana Mizuki was totally worth it. I don't care what any of you say. Hana Mizuki was worth it. It's Dude, always I worth really, it. I, ca- I kind of just regret not getting what Clicker ordered. Like, <laughs> Should have. It that was thing the was like best huge. Thing. You pick something so average yeah, when it like, comes to yeah. Japanese food. Yeah, we were all you, telling you everything's good there. We told you what to try, and you're just like, oh, well, I'm going to get teriyaki chicken. You got, <laughs> you you get got that the most, anywhere. You got I, the I was most trying other things as well, like the, the onigiri. That's uncommon, right? <laughs> A little <laughs> bit. I know. Uh, it not is. as well, much. Yeah, it's like. Hanamizuki, for those who don't know, Hanamizuki is a very authentic Japanese restaurant that's located in Orlando on iDrive. See, the thing is, I often take risks. Like, I'm the guy who usually looks at something weird, like a like a banana burger or something, and orders it to try it. But just, I don't know, man. Like, that day, I was just feeling teriyaki chicken, and I tried teriyaki chicken. <laughs> I had teriyaki chicken. So I mean, granted, it was probably delicious. It's teriyaki yeah, it was pretty chicken. Good. Like, but then, I, but then I kept looking at like, I mean, you tried the duck thing, Roberto, and that, um, I mean, it was probably good, but it, it didn't look that appealing as a as a no, lunch plate. Was, so that that was, was probably what I was gonna order if I ordered something else. So I I didn't really regret that because of that. That I actually told my sister to get the same because I wanted to try it. Uh, and in the, in the end, I don't think I even did try it because it was so little. I felt bad for her. <laughs> like I didn't want to like take one, like a quarter of her thing just to try it. But anyway, we should probably get back to the the topic though. This is still Megacon. the topic. It's still I mean, a topic. Like, yeah. That's well, something, yeah, something we did at Megacon. I, yeah, something we always do at Megacon. This is <laughs> this is dead. You got to realize this is just gonna be a ramble for like an hour, and then we'll just stop. Cut like, it out. Yeah. This, <laughs> All right. Like yeah, there, much. there's. Yeah, anybody who's listening and expects this to be structured, it's not. We're just going to ramble about whatever the hell right. we want with this, because none of us prepared. None of us really wanted to. Fuck it, we're just going to talk. <laughs> so well, Honestly, it seems to be working fine so far, though. Yeah. We already got like 20 minutes or so, probably a little more. Well, 19 minutes, and, and we only talked about the dealer's room so far, pretty much, so. Yeah. Well, that's why it was the main attraction, and we all, literally everyone in this podcast got something from the dealer's room and it's it's good it's it's really good i didn't find my one piece messenger bag well you i did, did but, but you did. <laughs> i I, I i found it too late because too late. oh you ended up finding one you liked better um not really i found i finally found a one piece messenger bag but it wasn't as large and can't hold as much as the one i got so the one I ended up getting is a Cowboy Bebop messenger bag, and those who haven't seen Cowboy Bebop, shame on you, go see it. Um, oh yeah, I fucking love it, because it's uh, the Corgi Bebop one, because yeah, I've seen Corgi, that one a few times, it's great. Corgi Bebop, um, and I got that. So in the end, I actually accomplished my goal of getting a messenger bag, but um, it wasn't a one-piece messenger bag, but that's okay. I already have so much things one-piece that it's... it's it's already too much. I need to start getting things that aren't One Piece. Oh, 
another thing I just remembered, just so you guys, just just to inform you guys, um, because you talking about that, it's like yeah, I have way too much stuff for uh, Bakamono Guitari, but uh, my Hanamono Guitari actually came in today. Oh, nice! Ah. So I'm pretty happy about that. Are you so. going to marathon it? Well, no, I'm gonna wait till I get Suki. Once I get Suki, then I might. Because then I'll have everything that's been aired so far. I have everything that's been released so far, but not everything that's been aired because Suki hasn't been released yet. Which, let me actually take a look and see if they've announced when it will be. I don't think I thought so it was, I thought it was sometime this season, but maybe I was wrong. No, it already came out. He meant like the official release for North America. Oh, 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 oh okay. Yeah, no yeah like I have the physical copy of Hana now. I, I I love how like Klecker has already watched it and still he talks about it like yeah. oh I think it may have come out. <laughs> what Suki? Yes. Did I? I still Suki? lost. Yeah, probably. Suki came out. Um, it was the one that came out on New Year's Eve. That was a great day. Yeah, that was a great day because it, it dropped all of it at once, and I was like, so guys, I know I'm here to see the family, but. I'm going to be outside with my hookah for about three hours watching this, and I prefer <laughs> you to leave me alone. Thanks. And they're like, okay, cool. Right. Because they, they understand and everything, so. They understand that you have a giant thing for Bakamonogatari. A giant thing? All right. <laughs> oh, <yeah. God. laughs> I, oh, that's it. Great for the start of the podcast. Yep. They, oh, they, gosh they, damn it, man. Look, no, not you, not you. Clacker. I'm going to get Clacker saying they understand that you have a giant thing cut. Oh, <laughs> yeah. good. I'm cool with that. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, anyways. Oh, well, you can take it when I was talking about the case here and be like, oh, it's purple. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, how about that burlesque show, guys? Oh. Oh yeah, good yeah. good segue there. That actually mm-hmm. fits pretty well. It does. That Anyways. Jigglypuff man, that Jigglypuff. That cool. Jigglypuff. She's actually um, cause this is not the first time I've seen the burlesque show by these people. Second uh, time, don't lie. <laughs> Second time, and we should explain what it was about too, cause they're not gonna understand. Bruno, it. Well, right. we'll, we'll just say who it was. Like what? They're like uh, Fletcher Pixels. This. Yeah, it was yes, the pleasure, pleasure pixels. pixels. Yeah, little little plug for them because they did a fucking great job. Like, uh, what yeah. they are, their pleasure pixels. What they are is a, it's a group of people that don't like they don't really do it professionally or anything. They just want to do like some burlesque show type of stuff and everything. And they're just regular people. Like some are office workers, teachers, right. doctors, whatever. And they're just like, fuck it, let's have some fun on the weekends and do this stuff. So yeah, they right. they go to convention and stuff and do this. And they did Smash Brothers um, for MegaCon, which was pretty great. And the cool thing is that you could. You could kind of see that they were amateurs, but they were really good amateurs that looked like they like they they had all the dance moves figured out and everything, and it actually was way better than I initially expected. Because cause we know that like usually on the on those conventions, those kinds of shows are usually made, uh, like you said, by but by, by people who aren't really professionals at that. They have other jobs and stuff. They kind of just do that on their own. Uh, so I already went with somewhat like low expectations. I was like, I'm not sure how this is gonna be. I'm just gonna take what it is, and it ended up actually being very good, very entertaining, and everything seemed very like rehearsed and everything. So oh yeah, they they did a great job. That Jigglypuff was yeah. just so playful, and it's like yeah. <laughs> Jigglypuff. My two was favorite good. characters. My two favorite characters were represented well, so I was happy. You're Lucina and, and also Rosalina and Rosalina. Yeah. Oh yeah. My two mains. Yeah. Oh my god, that that peach at the beginning too, sweet Dude, that was peach good. was good. That was a yeah. hell of an opener because that was that was yeah. completely because most of them had multiple people doing stuff with them and all that. That was completely solo opener, and she just fucking rocked it. It was great. Not only that, yeah. she was the one that actually had a full on like poofy dress she had to remove, which props oh, to yeah. her on that one. Yeah, um, as soon well, as we saw that, my sister mentioned, like, they set the bar really high on the very first presentation. Yeah. Let's see if they can keep it. But they managed, man. For the most yeah. part, one they thing, managed. One thing I'm so glad about, too, was whenever um, whenever they did the villager, he kept just doing the oh, thing yeah. with his hands <laughs> on his hips and the big smile, like, sideways. And all that. <laughs> he was fucking nuts. Like, the, the great thing about this, even though, like, uh, because it's it's a mix of both guys and girls, um, even even when there are guys, like, it was still entertaining to watch them because none of them were doing cool shit. Some of them were just fucking hilarious anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Ike was great. Yeah. God, <laughs> so much terribleness, guys. Ike 
was no, Ike did a really good job. Did you you know the Mario Brothers are fucking amazing. Mario yeah, Brothers are awesome spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mario Brothers are like flipping around doing all this stuff. Well then they had like they just had that what that atmosphere the whole time which is like, Yeah, I'm a badass. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of attitude, like good yeah. attitude and stuff, so it was yeah, good. it was it, it was, was actually show. nice that um so when we went to go see the burlesque show, there was actually a giant line, like massive line to see this show. And yeah, thankfully we got there early enough there was so that we could be originally the they were only gonna put him in like a two hundred like two hundred like less than people that, I think. room. It was probably less than that. But luckily they like people were like, Hey, we need a bigger room and they were able to get him a bigger room and everyone was able to enjoy it. But it's cool that that happened because I remember going to AFO last year and a really popular thing that people like to go to a lot. Not a lot of people got to go to because they booked a tiny room. But Oh, yeah, uh, they went they went from a room that would hold like 80 people to one that would hold 3,000 for this. Yeah. Yeah. And when, yeah, they, when they, they were was... walking us out, because they walked us out like in line and everything where everybody was lined up, it took us about five minutes to walk because like, the, the room we were going to was past the end of the line. It took us about five minutes to finally hit the end of the line walking past them. I was like, holy shit, there's a lot of people who want to go to this. Yeah, since you mentioned that, that convention center was so big. Like, I was really impressed by, like, the size uh, and the, the area of the whole thing. And there were, like, like three different floors of stuff. I was, I was, that was only, like, half of well. it, too. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, that was only, like, a third of the actual convention center. Because that was just yeah. the west building. There's also a north building and a south building. Which yeah, is that place is crazy massive. huge. Yeah, it's super massive. And it's cool that Megacon was held there. But yeah, the burlesque show was definitely another highlight of Megacon. And then the next one, which is CJ's personal favorite, is the Boondock Saint panel. Oh, that was so good. It was. Um, which was really cool because literally they were in character. They pretty much, you saw the Boondock Saints as they were mm -hmm. in the movie, and they acted exactly like how they were in the movie. Yeah, and it was really fun to watch. Yeah, pretty much if you could think of, like, just Boondock Saints, like, what a panel would be like with, like, some of the people from that, it is exactly what you're thinking. It was terrible for kids, like, there was cussing all over the place, there was dick <laughs> jokes, there was yelling, like, fucking, just, they, they were in character, it was amazing, it was great. Yeah, I just want to point out that although like I had never like I have never watched Boondock Saints and I I said I would I was gonna watch it later and I still have it. I don't think I will that soon because I have a lot of anime to catch up to and everything now. But that uh, panel was still very entertaining just because the guys were like very funny and at the same time very humble about their positions and they kind of like you can see that they're those people that got famous but understand their whole like path mm -hmm. and understand that like everybody who who got them to that point and understand that all those fans really like them and are there to see what they, they talk about and really appreciate that so none of them seem like really uh actually like, cocky or anything or you yeah, know like some famous people are, yeah, yeah they were all really nice and there was this one point where, where someone they did this q a session and someone mentioned oh my friend is a big fan of yours he's it's his birthday today and and he didn't even ask, but the guy offered to like call him f his friend right there and just talk to him for a little bit in character. Yeah, he was so like, "Give me I the fucking was... phone, let's do this." <laughs> yeah, I thought that was that was pretty awesome from from his part. Oh yeah, and that guy was was my favorite, like the blonde guy. I don't kind of remember his Sean, name. Sorry, Sean Patrick Flannery. Yes, that guy. So he was great. He gave really good life advice as well. Yeah, he yeah. Did. It's it's it's. Funny how they were joking so much, yet all of a sudden they would take a really serious note, and you'd be like, oh man, like this guy's like blowing my mind with this like yeah. <laughs> amazing advice right now, and then he'd make a hilarious joke about how he would throw donuts on his dick or something, and it was hilarious. <laughs> or shoot shit out of a cannon, a little air yeah. cannon and all that. That cat was never the same. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad that Redis wasn't there either. I don't even know. I'm sorry. The, who? Norman Reedus, who, he's on The Walking Dead. He plays Daryl. He was nah, at the, the he was at the convention, but he didn't. Oh, are you talking about the guy who plays Yondu on the Guardians of the Galaxy? No, no. Okay, because because no, that guy was at the that's convention. That's his brother. Also plays... His fictional brother. He he plays oh. Merle in The Walking Dead, which is Daryl's brother, and they were both at MegaCon. Right. 
But for some reason, I heard something that Reedus can't do panels just so people can't ask him about The Walking Dead or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the other guy actually held a panel, but I think it was going on at the same time as the cosplay competition. So we uh, yeah. none of us ended up going to it. But I'll probably have liked that because cause that actor is pretty funny, I heard. I've seen some interviews of him, even though like, I know almost nothing of him. But So the cosplay competition. Yeah. Why do you guys that think was, of that? I wanted, my, of... I, I wanted my buddy Manny to go up there because he, uh, he was dressed in a Sailor Venus outfit and it was hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, that would be cool. Because they didn't let walk-ons go in after all the competitors passed through the catwalk. For the League of Legends costume competition. Yeah, just everything was from League of Legends. Cause, that you know, got it's annoying our... really fast. <laughs> and then oh, no, the winner the... was really good. Yeah. To me, the announcing of the actual... like I felt like the competition itself kind of lacked some organization somewhat. It did. Um... Which kind of made me shy away from it a little bit. But the actual people who contended were really cool. When Wendy showed up, Wendy from Fairy Tale, for those of you who don't know, she was adorable. And I wanted her to win, but she didn't. You probably but... wanted to do some other things. No, no, <laughs> I didn't. Christ. That, like, I have morals, CJ. I have morals. Oh, is morals. she young or something? You didn't remember? She was... she was like, she was like five. <laughs> She oh, was... I didn't fucking know. She I have was... no idea who this character is. I just know from... you talked about some girl. I was like, oh, I probably... It was from the kids' competition. <laughs> well, fuck, I don't know. I know nothing about this show. Uh, I said adorable, not hot. Well, he is crazy about Shinobu. Well, older, women... <laughs> older women can be cute. I mean, look at Susie not from Game Girls. She's adorable. Um, I... I've heard you say Kotsky is both cute and adorable, and she's in her 20s. Cute. Yeah, yeah. If she's you got nothing. Cute, you got if nothing, she's bro. cute and adorable, that's a different story. And... No, it's not. Alright, alright, I'm gonna stop, because yeah. it's not gonna win. Not gonna win. Yeah, just just stop before you dig yourself yeah. a hole. So yeah, I mean, I wish they would have told them to, like, stop at each section and let people take pictures. A lot of the pictures I got from the competition was just blurry because they were walking and some people didn't know to stop you know well they didn't have it well organized really no that's right yeah and especially like from the seats that uh roberto and uh roberto got uh that we ended up sitting with him and stuff it was kind of bad to see because they would never like stop and look at that direction they would just like go straight for the most part so they were kind of on the side but overall really good cosplay for the most part i think i really like i really like mikasa I really liked some of the Zelda characters. Yeah, that they the did. Hyrule uh, Warriors, they were great. Yeah, they did all the they did three villains. It was Zant, Ganondorf, and uh, Gearhim, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah those, those were, were good. Really yeah, good. They, they were, were really great. good. I got pictures of them outside of the competition, and they were they were awesome. Uh, who else? There were a bunch of good ones, but I can't quite remember most of them now. Uh, the- as, for, as for League of Legends, there was actually a pretty good Draven in there, although he didn't win anything. It, was, it looked quite a lot like Draven. Talking about cosplay in general, we did see like a... I I doubt any of you guys watch Once Upon a Time, but there was this dude who cosplayed as uh, Captain Hook from Once Upon Uh a Time, which is based on... It's based on Captain Hook from Peter Pan, but the the look from the show, and he looked exactly the same, pretty much. Like, even the guy, like the, the... the face of the guy kind of looked the same as the face of the actor somehow. So maybe it, maybe it was, was. Even, like it could it could have been the actual guy. I don't know. They do I that assume sometimes. It was cosplay. Yeah, I've heard. I think Andrew Garfield went as Spider Man in a con once. Well, that's different the though. That, oh, that's, okay. Because I mean, he's wearing a mask. You can't really tell who's right, right. there. <laughs> but a better example: uh, Brian Cranston went to a Comic Con dressed as Walter White, and nobody knew it as it was him. Oh yeah, I remember oh, reading about that because he's like, "This is like something I haven't been able to do in years, and just walk around and people aren't like." I mean, yeah, someone will stop and take pictures, but I'm just one of the people right now. That's like, awesome. It, it, <laughs> it, it like blew his mind or something. It was pretty hilarious. Speaking of yeah. which, I I dressed up for MegaCon. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Although I didn't get to see that live, no. I saw it only through pictures. But... Yeah, my back was was given out halfway through. Surprisingly, not very hot though. Like the clothes that I picked. Where they ventilated well, and for those of you who are wondering, I dressed up as uh, Uchiha Madara from Naruto. 
So it was Naruto. Yeah. Cool. You, you, yeah. you can check the the podcast website later. We're going to have some pictures posted. So you can take a look yeah, at that. Could be listeners. Cool. Take a I, look. I actually said it as a joke to mess you up, to, to make him mad, but it didn't work. Well, so. no. Well, we could do it. <laughs> I figured like we'd pull all of our pictures together and post it there and they could check it out. Yeah, yeah we'll just, yeah, that'll be fine. We'll find some of our favorites and stuff and post pictures. Yeah. Yeah, they probably would like to see it. Um, but let's see. What else was another really good panel? There wasn't that many, sadly. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed the comedy one that no one went to. No one went but- to. Feel free to talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, t- tell us about it then. Just okay, know it. so there was five different comedians, right, that all went on and did their own thing. And one of the most hilarious ones was literally just a guy with a guitar. And his presentation was just so subtle and monotone. It was so hilarious. And he taught me new ways to flip people off. He was like, if you're going to flip someone off, you should be inventive <laughs> about it. And he <laughs> he created this thing called the toss-up flick off, where you literally look like you're throwing a ball, and when you catch it, you finger so like you're you're, you're literally flipping someone off. <laughs> you almost said the ball. I stopped. <laughs> I stopped. That was close. <laughs> Holy shit. Anyways, there was there his presentation, and he would just he'd just be playing the guitar, and then he'd stop and then say something, and it it was just great presentation. Um. And they mainly had a lot of comments on how the gaming, like, gamers are starting to, like, rise up because now we have all these amazing shows that are all game and comic related. Like, we have Gotham, we have The Flash, we had Arrow, we had, we're getting all this stuff that's related to games. Oh, and yeah, that's a good point. Well, yeah, like, in general, like, nerd culture has become pop culture today, pretty much. Yeah, and it's it it it's great, but it pisses me off at the same time because I got shit for this for so long for being like part of this culture, and now it's just it's the cool thing now. It's like fuck yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Damn I, it. I know how you feel. Why didn't this happen like ten years ago? Well, it's it's more like I'm happy because like well, I get more that. of it and everything, but it's like fuck all you guys that were assholes that pretended like you're the beginning of it and all that. Like I don't know. yeah, <laughs> we yeah. call those hipsters, CJ. Um, but there was another if guy. If anything, I'm a hipster because I I liked it before. It was cool. <laughs> there was a guy who actually um is a legit comedian, as unlike professional shows, and he was actually hilarious. He is from Boston, so he had this Boston. shirt called "Fuck," and it just had a like definition of the word "fuck," and it was like a Boston term for pretty much like "fuck." And it's like, it is not <laughs> technically a cuss that. word because it's just fuck. It's not a cuss word. So, it, like, it was hilarious. He had all this, like, usages of the word fuck on this shirt, and you could buy the shirt, and it was it was hilarious. Um, there was just a lot of really good comedic stuff. Um, I mean, it, right, it, it I didn't was, see that. It was a comedy show, so they and they did a really good job at being a comedy show. And most of the jokes they made were towards um, gamers and stuff like that. And it was actually really cool. One of the most hilarious things was there was a clown there. And he was creating balloon animals. And he oh my God. was creating this one balloon animal and he was messing around with it. And then he asked two girls to get up. And he was like, all right, I want both of you to hold one end of this balloon dog that I have created. And... He then asked them to close their eyes and to make make a wish. He then popped the middle section of the dog, and then at the end, you had two dick-shaped balloons. And then his comment was, one of them wished harder than the other. And it was just, like, it was hilarious. I never saw, I didn't see that coming, and it was just a hilarious okay. joke. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think that one was more... Uh, physical to the point where you yeah. just had to see it. But, uh... Yeah, it, it was. But there was a lot of really good stuff that they they did. Um, and they had really good, like, crowd interaction, too. Like, there was a comedian that asked... She pretty much sang songs. That's what she did. But she did it, like, on the spot. So she had this song called The Happy Song. And she asked the crowd what made them happy. 
one of the crowd members said, sex. So, she sang about sex. Expected. <laughs> and right. she did a really good job, and it was just hilarious. It was it was interesting how they incorporated some music into a com- comedy, and also how it was geared towards gamers. Nice. Well, I've heard about those kinds of like gig comedy shows before, and I've never been to one. So I was actually thinking about going to that one, but we were kind of very tired and uh, really hungry. hungry and everything. So we we had decided to do something else. Yeah, like if, besides we were. Go ahead. I was gonna say if you guys have seen the um, well, not I'm sure you guys have, but if like the the audience and stuff has seen any of the uh, the Snickers commercials where it's like you're not you when you're hungry and all that. That was me because I was both hungry and very, very tired, like halfway through the the costume competition. So yeah, I was like, I need to go. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. We had also just came back from a Game of Thrones role role playing game. That was actually a lot of fun, surprisingly. Even though yeah, we, especially... we didn't play any like major roles, I was just like a guard, and Dan was I don't know what he was. I forget. I was a courtier. And That's I didn't right. Even know what that meant. And then they kept explaining to me, but I could never actually figure it out. <laughs> and then I kept trying to, like, do something in the game. But at the same time, like, I was worried that if I did something, like, harsh that would change the game, people would get mad because I wasn't supposed to or something. Because I was just, like, I wasn't a character, actually. I was just, like... Because we, we got in late to that panel and we didn't sign in or anything. Not panel to that event or whatever. And so we just got, the, the like, some fake... Almost like some fake NPC spots kind of thing. So we're just like hanging out. Uh, had some simple tasks. Roberto basically just had to obey the Stannis Baratheon, who who was the king there and everything. For those who don't know, Game of Thrones and everything. And I was just a courtier at the at the castle, just having to talk to people, I guess. <laughs> So, Dan, but it was it was fine. I feel like it was a bit of a missed opportunity because with Game of Thrones, there's so much they could have done, and they kind of just decided just to create, kind of create their own little story and everything. But well, they don't want to hit fun. spoilers or anything, though. They kind of yeah. have to come yeah. up with their own little story, and that's that's the whole thing with role play as well. You don't you're not supposed to know what's going to happen and everything, so you can make your own decisions and do stuff for yourself. Yeah, I know that. I just thought like the story was very simplistic and kind of nothing happened for an hour. I don't know. It was, it was kind of weird. I guess because people weren't really into it yet, and then as like stuff started to happen, they got more into it, you know? Yeah, that was probably the big reasons. Like, a, a lot of people who were there didn't really know anything about role-playing at all, and, and that includes me, by the way. That includes me, that includes my sister, even though she kind of started getting into it after a while. And, and a few of the other people were just, like, hanging out, being like, okay, so I don't know what to do. But, anyway, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Besides that, Let's see. I did go to a few panels of people that I didn't know at all, but that ended up being quite interesting besides the Boondock Saints panel. Uh, so I did a, a, a panel with four different fiction writers where they were talking about character development and the way you evolve a character through conflicts and both like external conflicts, internal conflicts, all that kind of stuff. And I actually thought it was very interesting because it was one of those things where they're mostly saying... Uh, basic things that are sort of common sense, but it's still like nice to listen to it and, and finally notice it to a point, you know? It's like some dude was talking about like the graph of how like uh, a character goes down and then something happens and he comes back up and kind of goes like a V and then the other dude was talking about how like he prefers to work in a job and like all different kinds of storytelling with examples and stuff and I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of like details right now, but I, I, I did think it was quite the, the entertaining a uh, little panel. And then there was also one with um, independent uh, filmmakers where they were basically just giving tips to aspiring f- filmmakers and stuff. And, and that was quite entertaining. A-, a lot of those things are just about guys who made it telling you that they don't quite know how they made it, but you just have to keep trying and keep making things. So, nice. you know, the usual, like, if you want to do it, just do it. Like, yeah. Don't don't mm-hmm. limit yourself. Don't tell you like excuses not to do it. If you want to do something, just go ahead and go after it. That's pretty much the the most that you get from that. But it's it's, re- it's really good to hear, even though it's common sense to a, to a point. So. Nice. One highlight of the con for me was I entered a Mario Kart tournament, and I almost won. <laughs> I got to the That's finals, right. and then I lost terribly, but I got to the finals. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's it's Mario Kart though. Also, it might have been because I was there. No, it it, it wasn't that. It was like I I 
I cracked under the pressure because I was like, it's the finals. I got to do every turn perfectly. And <laughs> I can't do every turn perfectly in that game. So it ended up messing me up. Um, so there was a lot of stuff that I could have done differently. But it was a really fun, really fun thing. Let's see. Is there anything else? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We saw Adventure Time. We saw the two. Adventure the Time. Yep. Oh yeah, Those... the, the voices of uh, Finn and uh, Finn and Marceline. Finn. Yeah. Finn and Marceline, which they they were actually pretty cool. Um, yeah. Really and young. They too. actually, yeah, they're actually really young too. Um, they actually um gave us some hints on what could potentially happen in the next season of Adventure Time. So that was cool. Uh, we I'm went... so not excited to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I've never seen it. I've only seen like a couple episodes of Adventure Time. It's, but I it's really very good. It. it takes a few to get into it's... it and get used to the characters, but it's very good. Oh, yeah. yeah. I understand. It's... And apparently there's a lot to that because, I mean, like, they were talking about, like, post-apocalyptic world and how this world was even created. And it was like, wow, this thing must be really in-depth. So yeah, the, the the world and, like, the characters are actually pretty fucking deep. So, like, well, shit gets real, man. I, I do know that, like, not that that is the case, because I don't think I've ever actually watched a full episode of that. But there are some of the new cartoons that are, like, really, really crazy. Like, to the point where I almost, like, get kind of scared when I watch them, because I, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> But I, I can't really say names, but there's one that's got like the strange world or something, I don't know, like a strange world off a character name or something like that. And it's just like random as fuck. And like just I, I think I, it's I, a I strange explain. world of bubblegum or something like that. Is it about a yeah, fish and a and a cat? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's Is it a blue cat? What, what, yeah. Usually when I when I turn on Cartoon Network these days, I just I have no clue what's going on. Regular show is really good. If you see it on Cartoon Network, the regular show is really good because it was actually originally supposed to be for Adult Swim, and it kind of failed with that. So they're like, "Oh well, let's let's take out all the beer they're drinking during the parties and make it soda." And right, yeah, it works. So there are like a lot of things that are just metaphors in that for like completely other things, and it's fucking hilarious. I also find it very like random how the annoying orange from YouTube like so it was very popular stupid. on YouTube a few years ago. Yeah, it's so fucking stupid, and it's now like an actual TV show. And I don't know if it's on Cartoon Network over it's there, on but it is in here. I think I don't oh, know. Okay, so it's Nickelodeon. Care. It's it, it is somewhere. Dude, Nickelodeon. I, I don't know. Down. Yeah, I just find it crazy that like it's still like, like that it it became an actual TV show on an actual like network and stuff. Ugh. Yeah, I know that real regular show has a lot of like anime references. They did yeah. like they've had like Cowboy Bebop, and recently they did like an Evangelion thing. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, re regular show is some pretty cool shit. It's it's very entertaining. All right, well, we're coming up on almost an hour here, so I'm pretty much out of stuff to talk about. Like, what about you guys? The only <laughs> other thing I would want to talk about is. Let's see where you're bringing us, Clecker. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Don't disappoint. Make sure not I'm, to disappoint I'm, I'm us not, this time. I'm not going to disappoint you. <laughs> so, the, I just want to touch base on one last thing, and it's MegaCon was fun, but it wasn't something that wowed me as much as AFO, which I have gone to for three years in a row. Which stands for Anime Festival Orlando. Yes. And I think the main reason for this is because I think since AFO is such a more such a smaller scale event, they have more time to prepare and more time to develop the stuff they do. So all the panels I go to there feel fun, feel interesting to do, and it's very fun to just go there and go to the panels. Like at MegaCon, it was fun to go there and then go to the dealers. Like everyone just went to the dealers oh. room. To me, at MegaCon, the, the only kind of disappointment was that anime sushi area. Yeah. Because the things that went to in there seemed very bit poorly prepared. Yeah. Not not, not to, like, criticize those guys that much, because I, I don't even know, like, what treble they had to go through to, to set up everything and, and how much they had to rush to make their stuff. So I, I'm not necessarily saying, wow, well, those guys are bad or anything, but it just happened that the panels that I went to there, that I tried to go to, like, two of them, uh, ended up being pretty bad. People were late. Didn't work out. And then you guys tried to go to another one. That same things happened apparently. So yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, it was. I mean, the panels themselves were not that enjoyable compared to AFO, which I've been to AFO three years. Every single year I go, the panels are great, and they only get bad, better every year. Well, yeah, uh, I, I just pointed out to say that although that area was kind of bad to me, the other panels that I went to, I liked all of them. Yeah. Well, one thing I'll, I'll say, Clucker, as well is uh, one thing that probably makes it where you enjoy AFO a little bit more is because AFO is much more of a. Um, like specialized convention. Megacon has just nerdy stuff in general. It's comic books, uh anime, like movies, sci fi, like everything where AFO is almost completely anime. So you gotta think about it in that, that aspect as well, because even if there is the same amount of panels, you have a lot more that are just specifically for anime so you can find things you'll enjoy more because you, you have a broader selection. That's true, but like yeah. Maybe may, maybe I just didn't go to enough panels, but did any of the panels actually do games that were fun? Like, besides maybe the Game of Thrones one, which I didn't go to, but, the, like, did... Yeah, the one wasn't a panel, it was just, like, a bunch of people in a room just playing together kind of thing. <clears throat> I don't yeah. know if that counts as a panel. I yeah. think so, but... but, like, a lot of the panels we go to in AFO usually are games, and they're fun games to compete in, and I didn't find any of that in Megacon, which to me was shocking, I guess, because, I mean, it's... No matter what, you'd think they'd still have some sort of, like, comp uh, competition or yeah. something like that. Well, the, the ones at Megacon were more, like... Uh, lectures with a Q and A session or just yeah. Q and A, and and maybe but, uh, maybe that's it. Maybe it's because it's such a large scale thing that it's right. it's more about learning how to get into this industry or learning how to dabble more into it, and that's cool, and I I appreciate that, but I feel like AFO is a more is more personal, I guess, and that's I mean that's all I want to say, and. Megacon, I'm not saying Megacon was terrible. Megacon was fun. It was awesome. I enjoyed it, and I'd probably go back again next year because the cosplay I saw there was super good. Mm -hmm. um, I And I will, I'll, I'll go back next year for sure. It's just I feel like if people are searching for a more personal experience, maybe AFO is more what they're looking for. All right. Yeah. I, I can totally see that, yeah. Especially since they're probably less people that go to it and that's more focused. Yeah. Yeah. We usually see like the same people too, and usually dressed up, and they've made improvements on their costumes and whatnot. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and um uh, call it here. Uh, I want to say thanks everyone for listening in and everything. Um, yeah, go ahead and uh, Dan, tell them where they can find the podcast and everything else, all the other stuff we do at now. All right. I hope I can remember everything. Not I got but it. But Roberto can back me up. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Pseudo underscore pod is our Twitter. Yeah. Okay. So pseudo random entertainment is our YouTube channel. I don't I think the channel is named just pseudo random. So, but we're probably going to rename that or not. I don't know. Just look for pseudo random. You might find it. Probably not. Search for uh, one of them. You'll find it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I think we start coming and up then, now. Yeah. And then look for pseudo random on iTunes podcast store. You're going to find us there as well. What else? I can't remember. Pseudo random podcast uh, wordpress .com. There, you, there go. you go. That that works. I'm sorry, guys. I've been away for like a month. This this I'm having to relearn things today. Yeah. I think we got it right. We got everything. And my anime list. We're on there. Okay. Right, we're on, yeah. We're on enough. the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just just look for a name. You're gonna find things. So. All right. And tell them where they can find all this stuff with you at Dan. I uh, just follow me on Twitter at Lima Daniel M. That'll be probably all you need for your life. So. All right. So where can we find everything for you at uh, Clicker? You can find me as a name called Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S. Or you can find me on my Twitter, which gives very helpful advice for those who want to know why all colors are green. Um, at O-Klecker, A-O-H-K-L-E-K-E-R. Wait, did you say A? A-O? No, I said K-L-E-K-E-R. Did you spell that right? Oh, okay, just making sure you spelled it right. He's not Canadian, it's not a Clecker. Hey! Okay. I mean, my name is Aaron, <laughs> so, but... <laughs> Alright, where can they find everything for you, Roberto? You can find me pretty much anywhere as RJR2992. Alright, and um, you can find me pretty much anywhere as uh, Boom Coffee, all one word. And, um, yeah. Um, hopefully we'll be back. I, I'm not sure if this is going to go up in between episodes, or if it's going to be one of the main episodes for a week. Dan will figure that out later. But, um, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be back to, hopefully... 
normal schedule soon after that and everything, and we'll figure out what we're talking about then. I don't know where we're at as far as what we're supposed to watch. So, yeah, this will go up sometime. And, yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening and all that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya. See ya. Yeah.